Time for your favorite radio program, Chatting from the Word in the Morning, with your host, Brother Oscar York DeVores, where we are praying up and praising up and putting that all-important snap, crackle, and pop in your Christian morning. Come on, come on, come on, I am here, and good morning everyone, we are so delighted to be with you once again here on Cutting from the Word. Our introductory song was Henry L. Harris, and he was singing the victory, we have the victory, amen, and amen, yes we do. Yes, we do. We have the victory, victory, victory in Jesus Christ. As long as you stay close with the Lord and be in the Lord, you will have the victory. For Jesus himself said in Matthew 11, 28 and 30, Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Oh, my friend, when you're going through some 
hard times, some battlefield times, the Lord will be there for you. And most of the time, He is the one that's carrying you through all your difficulties in this life. If you're wondering how you made it through it, go back and look. It was Jesus who carried you through those difficult times. And I, and I can testify to that because Jesus had carried this old guy here to his terrible, terrible times. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. We're so delighted to be with you and bring on another episode of Chatting from the Word. Come in. Uh, Chatting from the Word. Come in. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? Doing all right. How about you? Just fine. And we're so delighted to bring on another episode of Chatting from the Word and to uh, praise the Lord with you this morning and to be able to... Thank you. you too. And bring another episode of Chatting from the Word. We hope you have your ears on it. Ready, ready, ready to hear another episode. <laughs> amen. And they, amen. Oh, my friend. The Lord has blessed us with another beautiful, beautiful day, hasn't he? We on the top soil and not the soil on top of us. And we on this time side of life. He has given us, he has given us another day. Another chance to make what's wrong in our lives right. And to walk closer and closer with him. My friend, that is just... That is just a blessing within itself. Yes, it is. It was David who says these words. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. My friend, the Lord has blessed us all, all of us, as on this time side of life. Well, another benefit to make us own our lives right and to walk closer and closer with him. Yes, he has. <laughs> and my friend, my friend, we hope that you've taken that opportunity. Yes, we do. We hope that you've taken that opportunity each day that the Lord has given you to make what's wrong in your life right and to walk closer and closer with him. Don't swander it. Don't swander it. Please don't do that. Take this opportunity that the Lord has given you to make it right with him. Take an evaluation of your life. Are you truly living for him? Are you? I just hope you are. That's the reason why I've been you so delighted to bring this program to yours every Mondays through Friday so that we may, what we say here is to stay praying up and praising up this morning. Amen and amen. And also, also to put that all important snap, crackle, and pop. And your Christian the world. <laughs> oh, 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 amen. <laughs> all right, all right, amen. And amen. And we're so delighted to do it this morning. Yes, we are. We're so delighted to do it. And we hope you have ears on it, ready to hear another beautiful, beautiful program. Are you ready to pray up and praise up this morning? Oh, we lost the hope that you are ready. Oh, my friend, if you live in the section of the world that Brother Oscar lives in, in the West Carriage and Dayton, Ohio area, I believe that the weather people says that it is 24 degrees and sunny. 
24 degrees and sunny. And if you're happening to be looking out your window, like I am, <laughs> it may be looking sunny and, and really beautiful out there. But if it's 24 degrees, it's cold. So, my friend, just bundle up if you need to be out there in the element of things. Bundle up, bundle up, and stay warm. If you're going out and need to go out, if you're going to work, going to school, uh, going to visit your friends and neighbors or whatever you may be doing, uh, we want you to stay bundled up, stay warm. But the most important thing is to be watchful. Because we, we live in dangerous times. We really do. We live in dangerous times. And we just want you to be careful. Be careful. Be watchful. Staying praying up and praising up on this beautiful, uh, beautiful day. If you need to be out there in the element of things, be watchful and stay praying. Praying up. You are listening to Chatting from the Word. All right, all right, all right. My friend, if this happened to be your first time listening to the program, please do not allow it to be your last time. Come back, come back, and listen to the program once, uh, once again. Come back now. Don't just listen to us for the first time and just cut us off like that. Give us a chance. Give us a chance. And we just want to welcome you to the program. But not just only welcome you to the program, but we would love for you to know that you are our honor guest, and we honor you this morning. We want to honor you this morning for having your word in Amen, amen, and amen, and we hope, we hope here on Chatting from the Word that you love what you're listening to, we really do, we, we hope that you love what you're listening to, and of course we have a beautiful chat for you all lined up for you today, of course, it is a continuation on the terror of the Lord. The terror of the Lord, taken from Second Corinthians 5, verses 11 through 21. And we're still talking about the terror. And the reason why we are still talking about the terror, because we want to make sure that every one of you that are listening get an understanding of what the Apostle Paul is trying to convey to us here. And here he's talking about the terror of the law. He, he saw, we, talking about others that's with him, and doing the same, we are persuading men. We are persuading. We as ministers today, as evangelists today, we need to do the same. We need to be persuading men and women about the terror of the Lord. And that, and that to me, if you ask me for a show, that is saying that we need to preach that hell is real. And if hell is real, heaven is also a beautiful and real place. And that's what I believe this morning. If we are going to preach about the terror of the Lord, let's preach the whole counsel of God. Not just preach when we to make our audience feel good. Not just preach to make our audience say, oh, Brother Oscar, that's a good sermon. But preach it when they like it and preach it when they don't like it. You know, my many years in the ministry, I've been in the ministry almost 65 years. Many times I've had people, oh, Brother Oscar, that's a good, good, good sermon. But many times I've had them mad at me, too. I don't want you back here. So when you're preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, you, you know, the, the true counsel of God, you're going to get others that's just not going to like you. And that's just part of being evangelism. Many do not love Paul. Many do not love Peter, James, or John. So, my friend, that's part of the work of a true evangelist. That's the mark of a true evangelist, when he's telling the truth and 
majority of time people don't want to hear the truth of the word of God. Amen. <laughs> amen and uh, a amen. <laughs> I believe we just had a commercial break. I'm going into one. And if you're one of them that heard the commercial break, we want to thank you for coming back and, and keeping on listening to us. Don't leave us now because we're still talking. We're still here chatting. So <laughs> don't leave us and believe you need to just cut it off because we went to the station uh, break. And we want to thank you for coming back and listening. And my friend, if you truly love what you listen to, share our program with many of your friends, with your loved ones, with your neighbors, those uh, that your friends with on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram, and other uh, internet networks that you come on. Please share this fine, fine program. Tell others about the beautiful words of Jesus Christ and salvation. Amen. And amen. And my friend, if you want to know where, where you can catch our program, here's our announcer to allow you to know where you can listen to the program. If you're wondering where to listen to the program, of course, you can Google our program chatting from the word hosted by Oscar Hall. You can pull up many of our internet networks, iHeartRadio, 45, Google Podcasts, Franker, and many, many more if you want to catch on, listen to our program. Amen, amen, amen. Yes, if you want to catch me you know, out of programs, of course, you can go back and listen to the old programs, or you can listen to them in the combination of a program after program so that you may line up the chats to really uh, give a good lesson. If you want to take a lesson from the many chats that we're doing, you're welcome to do that too, okay? And of course, as the announcer said, you can catch us on iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Podcast Addicts, VLC, Apple Podcasts, and many, uh, many more. Amen. And uh, a amen. You are listening to Chatting from the Word. Amen. And amen. This is our prayer time, and if you have a prayer request that you want us to pray for here on Chatting from the Word, you can send it to our email addresses, which is lowercase Oscar York 3443 at gmail.com or chatting from the word at gmail.com, or you can put it on our messenger page on Facebook page on any page that you're listening to the program through, and we should be able to receive your prayer request. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
Amen. And uh, amen. Again, this is our prayer time. And if you have a prayer request that you want us to pray for here or in chatting from the Word, you can send it to those entities our announcer just announced. And as always, if you want, if you have a prayer request that you want to keep, Confidential, that's fine with us here. On the chatting from the word, with due respect, your confidentiality. Just simply say, but ask and pray for me and call my name. And I'd be just so pleased and so delighted to do uh, just that. Again, this is our prayer time. And if you have a copy of God's word, our scripture reading for our prayer time would be taken from Psalms, the 61st Division. That is Psalms, the 61st Division. And the psalm that's in the 61st Division penned these words, Hear my cry, O God, until to my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, Lead me to that rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me, and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in thy covet of thy wings. So I. For thou, o God, hast heard my vows, that hast given me the inheritance of those that Fear thy name, that would prolong the king's life and his years as many generations. He shall abide before God forever. All the fair mercy and truth which may preserve him. So will I sing praise unto thy name forever that I may daily perform my vows. Here the psalmist and say, hear my cry, O God, and tend to my prayer. Here David wanted God to hear him, and he did hear David. And when we are in the body of Christ, when we're in Christ, he hears us. Now, the difficult time that we have at times when he hears our prayers, he may not answer our prayer when we want him to answer it. Are the way we want him to answer it. But we serve a God that's an on time God, and he is there for you and for me. My friend, are you ready to approach the throne of grace so that we may have a little talk with the Lord this morning? Are you ready? Our Father, our Father who sits high and looks low, Father of this maker and Father of this vast universe, Father, you're the Father of us all, you're the maker of us all, and Father, we just want to thank you for being that merciful, kind, Loving, gracious Father. Oh, Father, we just this morning need you on every hand and on every side. Help us, Father, so that we may have the victory in you and in Jesus this morning. Oh, Father, Father, we just thank you this morning for giving all of us that's on this this time side of life. We that on top of all and not the song on top of us. Another beautiful day to 
make what's wrong in our lives right and to walk closer with you. Oh, Father, we thank you so much. So much, Father, and help us to always glorify you, glorify your name, and show others Christ in us. And Father, we especially thank you for allowing your only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to come down from the beauty of heaven down to this sin-sick world to show us how to love to show us how to live and to connect with you and father we just want to thank you this morning for allowing him our lord and savior jesus christ allowing him to face the cross becoming sin on our behalf so that our sins may be washed away in his blood Oh, Father, we thank you, thank you. Thank you, Father, so, so much for that. And, Father, we just thank you for your mercy, for your grace, for your love. And, Father, we come, Father, we come praying, Father, all the big disasters, occurrence that has happened in this world. Earthquakes and nightmares of places. Storms, hurricanes, and fires ripping homes and families apart. All the mass killings that's going on, Father. Oh, Father, we recognize sometimes the world is not a happy and friendly place. But, Father, help us, Father. Help them that have found themselves in those difficult times. Help them, Father, they know where they may get their help. For the help come from you which made heaven and earth. Father, Father, we pray this morning. For wash room is wars. We pray for armies in Israel. We pray for Russia and Ukraine. Father, we pray that they may find that peace. And that peace that give them that understanding. Oh, Father, we pray for any boy, girl, man, and woman. We want to accept Jesus Christ as their as, as Lord and Savior. We pray, Father, that they may do that today and do it before it's everlastingly and eternally too, uh, too late. And Father, we pray this morning for those that have lost loved ones. Father, we recognize that when you lose loved ones, it breaks the heart, relieves the home. Lonely, Father, we pray that you comfort them. Father, we pray that you comfort those that lost loved ones at the hands of the police. Father, we pray that you comfort them. Father, we pray for each police officer's family that have given their lives in the line of duty. Father, we pray that you comfort them also. Oh, Father, Father, we pray, we pray this morning. Father, we pray for all of our political leaders this morning. Father, we pray that they never make laws bidding us of worshiping you as spirit and truth. Make all who all can live in peace and harmony. Oh, Father, 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 we pray again. Father, church, the body of Christ. Father, we pray that you continue on allowing the body of Christ to be the lighthouse leading others to Jesus Christ. And Father, Father, we pray for all of our listeners this morning. Yes, we do, Father. We pray for each listener. We pray for their doubts and fears, Father. Father, we pray that you cast all their doubts and fears in the deepest part of the sea where they want to resurface anymore. Oh, Father, 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 we, we need you, Father. We really do. Father, we pray for our program this morning. Chatting from the Word, Father, help us to keep this program on the airways. Father, help us to keep on chatting about your Word and from your Word. And Father, help us with the lesson today, the terror of the Lord. 
by help us we may say something to help someone that's going through some difficult times. Father, be with the lesson that we may help someone to see heaven much more clearer, to be more equipped to how Satan at its worst. And Father, we pray for those that are going through some troubling times. Pray for those that are having problems in their marital problems, financial problems, problems in the home, problems in the school, problems in the church, problems in the problems. Father, we pray that you help them look up to you from whence coming their help. And Father, we pray for those that are coming to teach and preach the word. Father, we pray that you be with them through all through uh, our lives. Father, help them to keep on having the courage and the to preach and to teach your word. And Father, as always, we ask that you keep us encouraged and never discouraged. In Jesus' blessed name do we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for reading our scripture text along with us or praying along with us. And as always, we hope that we pray for something that's on your mind. And as I keep stating, if you have a prayer request, you can send it to uh, the many entities we keep on mentioning. If you have a prayer request that you want us to pray for here on Chatting from the Word. It's time for our chat for this morning, the terror of the Lord, taken from 2 Corinthians 5, verses 11 through 21. Are you ready, Brother Oscar? Hey, 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 I am here, and I am ready. <laughs> I am, I'm ready. I'm just trying to uh, deal with my feet being on fire. And being in pain, and most of you who have experienced what I've been through, you know what I'm talking about, but I have faith in my Father that everything will be all right. My trust is in Jesus this morning, and it really is, and we hope that your trust is in the same, in Jesus Christ, who died for your sins and mine. And again, we're so delighted to be part of your day, and we hope that you are just as delighted uh, to be part of ours as we are praising up and praying up and praising up this morning. We hope uh, that you, you are, you are, you are, <laughs> are glad. We hope that we have made you kind of happy this morning to uh, be in Jesus Christ and that waking up this morning to pray him, to pray and to praise him on this beautiful, beautiful day. Uh, that he has uh, benefited us with uh, today. Amen. And amen. So, my friend, get relaxed. Are you relaxed? I hope you are. I hope you relax. And if you are relaxed, go ahead and have your favorite drink this morning, coffee, tea, milk, juice, hot chocolate, cold chocolate, whatever it may be. Just go ahead on and, and have that. And get relaxed. Get relaxed. If you relax, you recline your chair. Recline on out. If you want to relax with your dinette, take a study in God's Word. Go ahead on and have a seat.
But what we request, what we request, what we uh, what we request, I want to say what we desire, and it should be a desire to us to the word of God with us, is for you to have a copy of God's word and open it to our text this morning. And of course, we're doing a continuation on the terror of the Lord taken from uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 11 through 21. So turn there and put your finger on, of course, Revelation 21 to 15. Uh, Romans uh, 1, I think is we are 28 and 32. Second Thessalonians 2, 7 through 12. So put your fingers on those uh, scriptures right there because... Because those are the scriptures we are going to try to deal with when it comes to our lesson here this morning, the terror of uh, the Lord. And many of you might be saying, well, Brother Alec, you're just taking so long on this lesson. And I know I do. I, 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 uh, I, I, <laughs> I feel as though that since we have time, we, we Bring this program on to you Mondays to Fridays at 9 o'clock at the Lord's Day. The same if we're not in the hospital or had to go to the hospital and uh, we're not sick. And, you know, uh, Bill Oscar had been sick lately with pain, having a bad foot here that he has to take care of. And we just want you to keep uh, Bill Oscar in your prayers that we may be able to come back and do uh, the program, but we just want to thank you for your patience and for your love when we bring this chat on. And at least, you know, since we're chatting, I uh, stand on subjects so long as we do, at least give us something to chat about when it comes to the Word of God. And that's what I look at. And I want y'all to, want you, I want you to open your mind. Open your mind, open your mind, because many, many, many minds are not open when it comes to the Word of God. Many of us have a closed mind. Many of us are stuck in things that we have believed and been believing for years. And when the Bible talks about what we believe differently, it is hard for us to accept that because that's something that we have not accepted. To some of us, it's foreign. So we don't want to accept it because it's a, it's an alienated, it's an alien to us. We just don't understand it's a different language. So we don't understand it unless we can make it plain to you to the Word of God, and that's the reason why Brother Oscar asks you to have a copy of God's Word so that you can see for yourself what we are chatting about, are talking about. And I don't want you to go away, just cut Brother Oscar off and say, well, uh, he just don't know what he's talking about. I feel like this, if I can show you in the Word of God what I am seeing, we should be able to reason together what is contained in the Word of God is for you and for me to accept what's in the Word of God. Like, like I said, many of us, we, we don't want to accept it because many of us have been drawn down to believe a certain way. And when, certain, when the Bible says something differently, we just don't want to accept it. But my friend, if one day you want to make heaven your home, you must accept what the Word of God says for itself. This morning we want to talk about the terror of the Lord and and I guess I'm trying to figure out a story point here because many of us, many of you know if you've been with us, we're, we're taking our uh, lesson text from uh, the second letter that Paul wrote to the Corinthian church and that's uh, uh, chapter 5 verse 11. When he talks about the terror of the Lord, I don't know if I need to reread it for emphasis' sake, but we we're going to reread it for just for that, so that we may get an understanding where we are coming from. 
And here Paul says in verse 11, for, uh, God, I can't see. Verse 11, Paul said, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God and unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciousness. Here Paul said we are, um, are trying to persuade you of God's terror. And we in the body of Christ today, we that are evangelists today, we that are ministers in the pulpit today or on the radio, we should be in the we should be in the job in the position of telling others about the terror of the Lord. Especially if you're not in the Lord. And that's a dangerous point, my friend, if you're not in the Lord. You must be in the Lord. And if you know many of the, uh, the lessons and the teachings of Paul, Paul is trying to tell us about being in the Lord, being in the body of Christ, the unity and oneness of Christ. And if you are in the unity and the oneness of Christ, of course, you need to worry about the terror of the Lord. And if you've been with us, you know we went to uh, the book that John wrote when he was on the island of Patmos. He said, and you must recognize that he says these words, that he was in the spirit of, of he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. He was in the spirit. He seen basically being in the spirit. He's seen spiritual things. He's seen the message that Jesus wanted him to see and to allow the church, the church, the body of Christ know then and for us to know today, if I may use it in that way. But many of us today, we don't want to adhere to the message of God. Many of us think Revelation is a book that we need to be frightened of or don't read, but it's not. If you read it right, it is a book, of course, of warnings, but it's also a book to allow us to know what to do. And that's something that we need to cling to tightly. And we've been coming from Revelation 20. Well, John said, I seen an angel come down from heaven with the keys of the bottomless pit. In other words, this angel had the key either to lock it or to unlock it. He had the power to open it or to close it. Okay? And we're talking about the bottomless pit, and we're going to move on. We already mentioned the chain. Because we went backwards when it comes to this chain, and we said that the chain, of course, that holds Satan down, and we're going to get into that in chapter two, verse 2, is the body of Christ that's chained together in unity, in love, in fellowship, in togetherness, helping one another to be strong in Jesus Christ. Because, my friend, that's the only way we can defeat Satan if we are holding together, if we are chained together, and that's in, in the body of Christ, in Christ, and we are chained together, helping one another to overcome some crisis of problems to help us to be strong in Jesus Christ. And so you know to change is that, you know the bottom this is the opposite is false teachings and how many today are falling prey 
to false teaching. And how many today are in false teaching? And how many today are teaching false teaching? And there's many today that are teaching heresies. There are many today are teaching false teaching. And, and the catch is, I'm not, I just thought about this. Many of the false teachers you know what they're doing today. They will take the word of God. They will use the word of God to make it sound like they are being truth to the word of God. But I'm here to tell you that if you don't keep the word of God completely and do as the apostle says do and follow that example, you're not the body of Christ. You're not the bottom of Christ. And you're not if you're not the bottom <laughs> the body of Christ, you want them to be falling into the bottomless pit and you continue on believing in that way, you're going to continue on to fall. Because the bottomless pit is like it says. It's a bottomless pit with no bottom. <laughs> okay, and Jesus himself says that the if the blind shall leave the blind, they shall fall up. They both shall fall into the pit, the pit, the pit. And Jesus was talking about even then in Matthew, he was talking about the bottomless pit that John saw in Revelation. Isn't that something? And he, he Jesus himself contributed that to the being blind teachers of the blind that lead the blind. And if you if you're following a blind teacher, of course, you are in that pit too. And many today, of course, I'm going to say this, many today are fallen for these blind teachers. For these teachers that teach and have truths. And some even has the goal to preach the truth, but they're not obeying the truth. They may say, yeah, I'm the church of Christ, but are they following the teachings of what the apostles laid out for us in his word? Are they following the teachings of Christ? And that, you know, that, that, that should be a, a thought in all of our minds this morning. Are they following the teachings of Christ? And that should be a question mark if you ain't one of them, uh, if you're following one of them blind teachers or blind beliefs. The question is, is this belief that I'm in, is it following the teachings of the apostles and the teachings of Christ? And that's one question that you should be asking yourself this morning. Because only the name of Christ can save us. And what that truly means is being you know, obedient to Christ. I just say, I'm in the name of Christ, and, you, and you're not doing as Christ says to do. And how the apostle says to do. If you're in the name of Christ, you're being obedient to the apostle's teaching. And what they say, and that example. But if you if you in one of them, like I said yesterday, I'm going to bite my tongue on this, and I know men are going to leave, and that's all right. But if you in one of those beliefs that believe in choirs and which Bible don't mention, and then like go back and get what, 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 what David says in Psalms, but what you got to remember, we live in the New Testament time, and David was not in the body of Christ. By Christ and come along to after Christ died and on the day of Pentecost, David was long gone dead then, and that's what you must understand. But if you're not in the body of Christ, you're not following the example that those that was added to the body of Christ on, on the day of Pentecost and the apostles' teaching, you're not following the right teaching. Ain't nowhere in the Bible. Where those that follow the apostles' teaching and was in belief of what the apostles were teaching, nowhere they had a choir, nowhere they had a piano, nowhere they have a drum. Read your Bible. 
But catch this, most of us, we're not reading our Bibles. Most of us, we love what that preacher is saying to us. Take control and not reading what it is to we, to we saying. But if you're not, as we said, believing in what the Word of God has to say, and you believing a blind teacher, you are continuously falling and falling into the bottomless pit. I know I took a long time to say it, saying what I just said, but that's true. But that's not the only thing that, that, that Paul wrote. Let's go to Romans real quick, and I want to bring that up. And and uh, we uh, we don't have time, but we're going to try to squeeze this in a little bit to Romans. Uh, first chapter of Romans. And it's not just being a false teacher. I believe in those false things that keep us in the bottomless pit. But Paul says this, and I want you to listen to it closely. Because we'll be back tomorrow to, to talk about it some more. If it's the Lord's will. And Paul says in verse, uh, let's say verse 29, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, Despiteful, proud, boasters, inventions of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, the day which commit such things, are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. In other words, you're falling into the bottomless pit too, and you live a life of hatred, live a life of covenant breakers, live a life of whispering and talking bad about people. That's something really to to think about and to. Consider. That's all I have for you today. We are so thankful to be able to bring or continue bringing this lesson on to you about the terror of the Lord. And we just hope and pray that you all are listening and taking heed to what, what the Word of God is saying this morning. Will you pray with me, please? Our Father, which in heaven. Loud be thy name, thy kingdom is here, thy will is being done. Father, we just want to thank you for allowing us to bring this program to the airways. Father, Father, always be with our mouths. Help us to say the things that we must say to a dying and sinful generation. Father, we pray for all of our listeners. Father, we pray that they continue on talking, talking about Christ. And chatting from Christ's word, keep on living uh, a life of being proud, walking with their snap, crackling, and pop with each step that they take, showing the world that it is a beautiful life in Jesus Christ. And to be able to stay praying up and praising up. And for we pray for all, continue to pray for all our listeners, those, of course, that are still as I am, that they may get help and relief from all their pain. In the name of Jesus, do we pray, amen, and a amen. Love somebody, love everybody, bye-bye, and may God bless.
Just <laughs> 